Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is how does a person get into the HVAC field, all right, uh, or HVACR field, all right. Um, there's a few things that I would recommend. Um, I want to give a shout out to uh, Refrigeration Tech for asking this question. I appreciate you guys asking questions, uh, and it gives me the ability to then think what other people are are really looking for. Um, in reference to training in the field and um, so once again I do appreciate all the questions that you guys ask in the comments section all right uh, but uh, for a technician looking to get into the field me as an employer what I would like to see is you know did the person go out and get that EPA universal refrigerant certification okay all four parts um, type 1 type 2 type 3 all right and core all right so you want to get that okay now that's something that that if you watch videos over and you study very hard for it, that should be something that you can try to try to get. All right. Um, there's other certifications out there as well. All right. Um, if you go, what I would suggest is going to the local supply houses and seeing what trainings they're going to have available in the future, uh, in the near future, um, such as like the uh, different CSST manufacturers, Curry Gay stainless steel tubing manufacturers. Um, if you can get certifications in them, that's just a maybe three hour course. You know, any of those trainings, it just shows initiative. If you're going out at night to the supply houses and going to maybe a furnace training or a tankless water heater training, that really shows initiative, all right? So getting those things. Um, after getting the EPA 608 uh, Universal Refrigerant Certification, uh, you can also get several other certifications online. I know epatest.com offers a free 410A certification and also a free PM maintenance technician certification. They just have to verify that you did get the EPA 608, all right? Another certification that you can get is an OSHA 10 hour construction safety certification. Um, there's a career safe campus, careersafe.com uh, uh, has a um, online version of that. You can get that pretty cheap, you know, I think it's don't quote me, but it's like twenty or thirty dollars or something like that, and you can go ahead and get that, and you can get that under your belt as well. So somebody that went through safety training might not look as um, much of a liability as another person coming in uh, that does not have that safety training under their belt. Already. So that might be a good thing to look at as well. So that you know, that's resume building certifications. All right. Um, also, on a resume, you know, you need a resume if you're going to be uh, dropping that off at different um, employers, uh, you know, potential employers. All right. Uh, if you're going to be submitting via email, you want to have a good-looking resume. Also, the other thing is you you want to highlight maybe some of your community involvement. You know, a lot of people they say in the in the sales world that uh, like people buy from like people. All right, and that. If you happen to strike a chord in your community involvement, whatever that may be, I always tell people to write something down. You know, uh, make sure you have some some type of thing that you're involved in written down on your resume. Okay, it just gives the uh, employer a kind of a, a vision into your life and just kind of sees like what's important to you. That's one of my favorite questions to ask. Is uh, you know, doing any type of interview or something like that is. Um, what is the most important thing in life to you? You know, that kind of gives me a well-rounded uh, position on somebody's life. You know, there's also different uh, personality tests that an employer may ask you to uh, ask you to take, all right, um, which is all fine. You know, it just kind of gives them a read on, on the kind of person you are. Um, basically, in this video, I'm, I'm, I want to highlight a lot of things that show initiative, like you know, getting your own tools. You know, you go into a interview, you know, they call you, you get the interview, you know, you want to show up very early, okay? Um, I remember in my younger, in my younger career, I was looking, I was uh, actually sitting in the waiting room and I actually was fidgety, all right? When I went in for the actual interview, they said, yeah, we were looking at you on the camera for a while, you know, they let me still sit in there, you know, out in the waiting room, all right? Um, so, you know, you want to be professional, you want to be on time, you want to, you know, look the part. Um, so in reference to initiative, you know, you go in there, the employer's asking you questions, 
you know, asking you, you know, do you even have the tools it takes to do the job? Okay. So, you know, gathering up your tools, you know, um, I provided a starting tool list for, for people looking to get into the field, um, you know, trying to gather those tools, even if it's just a little at a time, you know, even if you, you're just going to like flea markets or whatever, you know, or hitting sales and stuff like that, like a little at a time, you know, and then this way that shows initiative. I use that, um, that stance at least when I was already employed. What I did is I, to move further in my career, I started just gathering different tools, you know. Um, all of a sudden I had my pipe threading set and a tri stand and the boss was looking at me like, really? Okay. You know, then he, he wants to move on, you know, or, or I've had more diagnostic tools, you know, all of a sudden. And um, so the employer says, okay, well, maybe he really has the desire to learn more and move on in his career, all right? So um, those are all things that show initiative. You're practicing because you want to be good um, at your, your hands-on skills. Remember, your hands-on skills are going to be the very first thing that your employer tests you on, okay? In the interview, it'll be some maybe some uh, knowledge-based things and stuff like that, but that first day, you know, they're going to put you to the test, all right? And that might have to do with, you know, cutting up some sheet metal, making some things, or maybe it's gas piping, you know, does, it, does this individual know how to pipe wrench, you know, um, do they know how to put fittings together and stuff like that, you know, so a lot of those things are, are very helpful. I would highly, highly recommend that uh, an individual really knows down cold a tape measure, knows down cold, you know, just sheet metal, um, cutting sheets, sheet metal out without barbs, um, you know, putting gas piping together, you know, and, and then you can kind of move on from there. And then you should know, you know, your your some basic knowledge in uh, and um, in air conditioning and, and look at the refrigerants and stuff like that. Obviously, check out the videos and and so you know, um, at the channel there, um, at the upper right section, you have a search box. Okay. I only spend so much time on each topic and then I move on, all right, with these videos so far, at least I try not to duplicate too much. So each one of those things that, each one of those videos I have in the archives, um, all the videos going back to the, the first one that I started um, are all, you know, done that same way, very in-depth, step-by-step process. So I encourage you to check out the videos in, and you can actually search them out. In the uh, top right, there's a little search box in the channel. You can also check out the playlist and just view and see which ones you know you might want to research and stuff like that. So, say you, you put your resume in at a, at a certain employer, all right, um, and you were able to hand deliver it. And if you did do that, I encourage you to stop in every once in a while and say, "Hey, it's me," you know. Um, if they may not have had a spot open, maybe they do, they do now, all right. Um, if somebody sees talent, a lot of times, you know, the rule in HVAC is get them, get them before somebody else gets them. All right. Um, so if an employer sees that you have talent, you know, or you have drive and energy, you know, that's something that they're looking for. All right. During the interview process, the best thing that you can do, in my perspective, is to um, not come across too cocky, you know, uh, that you know too much or, or you know all this stuff and everything like that. Um, like I said, the very first day that that you're working for the company, they're going to test you out on the basic skills, you know what I mean? Um, so you want to have them all under your belt. And it's better to surprise someone with you excelling, you know, than it is to be let down, you know, you know, if the employer is let down by, you've talked up yourself so much and everything, and then here comes the first day and it's just kind of a let down, that's, that's no good. You know, you want to have that, that mix where, you know, you know stuff, you know, you know some of the things, all right, and you're hungry and you have drive and things, uh, but you want to be able to prove yourself. Another thing I recommend during the interview process is seriousness. All right, the employer is not looking for somebody to just fill a position. They want somebody to like move up in the company and move in and kind of really take some of the workload off. So while they're asking you questions, if you, if they open up and say, "Do you have any questions?" 
and you start throwing out long-term questions, long-term ideas, where am I going to, you know, what is it going to look like in X amount of years, you know, what do you see as somebody filling this position, when you start asking questions that have to do with the long-term, very serious questions, um, the, the interviewer is going to start to think about you differently. They're not, they're not going to think about you as, man, this person's only here for, the, for just the, the here and now, and then, they're, and then they're gone, okay? If you're asking the employer for long-term plans, then, then that to the employer means, hey, they're going to stick around. You know, I can invest in this person, and, and they're going to help me be a better company. In reference to negotiating um, a salary position or hourly rate or something like that, you know, you're always going to have negotiating, you know, you're, you're, it's going to be a back and forth. So don't get uh, too offended, you know, when somebody's trying to hire you at a lower rate than what you are looking to be hired at. All right. Um, it doesn't mean that they're not going to hire you for what you want. All right. It, you just have to sell yourself. That's that's the main objective there. All right. And then after you sell yourself, you got to prove yourself, you know. Um, so those are the two things so don't get dismayed if somebody don't just shut the door if somebody offers you a lower uh, rate than what you're really looking to accept just kind of keep the, the communication open with that individual and let them know how eager you are and 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 what you're what you're looking for and um, how maybe you could help their company in some way all right uh, but you know the biggest thing is don't sound too cocky basically that's that's the biggest thing but uh, do say you know like all these long-term plans long-term ideas that's what you have in your mind and that's definitely definitely what an employer is looking for you know in their mind is long-term plans you know how can I um, disperse the work that I have the workload out and how can I trust these individuals you know, the employer's always looking out for liability. I mean, it's a huge thing. You turn the power off on somebody's unit, you know, when doing a, um, an estimate or something like that or, you know, a layout or something, and somebody's going to be in big, big trouble, especially if it's freezing temperatures and they don't have any heat and all the water pipes break, they're not home or whatever, you know. They're, the employer's looking for somebody that they can absolutely trust and that has long-term plans in mind. So those are some of my ideas. Um, once again, build your resume. Get a nice looking professional resume. Um, you want to get all those certifications, you know, as many certifications as you can. Uh, there is EPA 608 Universal Refrigerant Certification, 410A Safety Certification, uh, Preventative Maintenance Certification. There is um, a PEC certification you can get online, ApolloPECs.com. Um, there, there's different ones that you can get just to kind of beef the resume up, all right? The uh, OSHA 10-hour construction safety certification, you can get that one, all right? And that's very inexpensive. Um, like I said, it's about $20, $30, something, somewhere around in there. And you can complete that all online, that one. Um, but you have all that. You have your community involvement. You have your experience and you want to have all of the dates that you were at different positions uh, and things like that. You know, you might even have a, a goal in mind on your, um, on your resume as well. Maybe some type of long-term goal. Maybe something that tries to make you stand out a little bit more. All right. If you have the ability to drop the application off in person, I recommend doing that. I recommend revisiting them and letting them know I'm here. You know, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking to get hired, um, and I'm hungry, you know, those types of things. Um, if it's a larger outfit, um, you know, the online applications, just be patient and remember that there's a negotiating, um, process that's going to take place regardless. So, so, um, don't just rate somebody off, you know, just keep the communication open and, um, and just and negotiate, you know, um. And as you move up the ladder, you know, nobody's going to be able to take the experience from you. You know, you're, you're going to know so much, you know, that you're going to be so valuable. When I was, when I was out there, people from different companies get to know you out in the field and they start talking to their boss. You shouldn't necessarily jump ship from one company to another, but I'm just letting you know, once you get the experience and, and if you're good, 
people are going to want you. You know what I mean? Um, you can get offered, you know, four dollars an hour more to go to a different company and set the other thing. And I'm not recommending that. You know, what I mean, I think you should stay at your company that gave you the shot. You know, as long as everything's working out, um, and just just work up. You know, in that, you know, get a NATE certification and uh, get other, you know, maybe BPI certification, just different things that show initiative. You know, do those things. Um, but once you get that knowledge under your belt, nobody can take it from you. And you are valuable. You are absolutely valuable. You know, um, it's, it's awesome to be able to uh, help people, you know, to be able to fulfill somebody's needs, you know, heat. Air conditioning, you know, somebody's dying on a hot day, and, and you go over there and, and you're rescuing them, you know, basically, you know, you're fixing it, um, and you know, you're educating the customer, all that type of stuff. That's a beautiful thing. All right, I want to take time to just acknowledge and thank you for your comments. Um, pretty awesome comments and everything. Uh, great questions, you know, when somebody reads in the posts, uh, you know, maybe your question, and, and I get a chance and I answer that question you know somebody else can really benefit from that as well some of your questions as you guys know have turned into videos um, so you know it just gives me kind of a range of what you're looking for uh, right now it's crazy you know I'm, I'm out trying to get air conditioning units up and running you know it's extremely hot here but um, you know as I have time I will make videos you know, uh, you know about some of the questions that you have and um, but it, it is an awesome thing so I, I appreciate your comments and uh, and uh, great questions and everything and great feedback so um, keep out all right and if you guys can think of anything else that you want to um, tell anybody entering into the HVACR field uh, please write it down in the comments below and that would be appreciated um, by everybody coming into the trades I'm sure I can't hit every every aspect of it but uh there's a lot of knowledge out there so uh, i'd like to hear from you guys and see what you have to say if you appreciate what this channel is doing for you uh, and you do want to support the channel uh, look in the description below and click through on amazon any purchases made through amazon uh, would help give a small contribution to the channel um, the prices are the same as normal and everything uh, but uh, it's something um, that if you do already use Amazon uh, and you want to help support the channel then go ahead and do that um, but uh, I also put the links down there for the gauge set that I use and also the hoses with the on off valves alright so that's actually the cheapest price that I could find for the gauge set and hoses um, but once again if you find something that's cheaper than that uh, for that particular item please put that in the comment uh, below but so far that's the cheapest I've found so all right and I am into supporting your local supply houses and everything like that so if the price is like near or whatever for that gauge set and hoses and that's what you do want to get um, go ahead and get that from your supply houses all right but I uh, hope you enjoyed yourself we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel